I try to have my gear ready before I get to my horse because a lot of people will go to the pasture to catch horse and they have everything in one hand and they're not prepared. Here's some little things that I do that I find makes it helpful. It's I'll take most of my lead rope and I'll lay it over my right shoulder with just enough weight in the back that it kind of keeps it from slipping off. Now the reason I use my right shoulder and not my left is nine times out of ten I'm going to catch a horse on my right side but I don't want to be fumbling around with the lead rope. So what I'm going to do is once this halter's on there there's going to be a moment when I'm going to go for the lead rope but if that horse were to take off if it's on my right shoulder it'll just fall to the ground. But if it were on my left shoulder and that horse took off to the right you can imagine I would just be decapitated, right? So that's a little thing that I do, and it frees my hands up. That's a little thing? <laughs> <laughs> it frees my hands up to be able to just go and work with my horse. Yeah. Matter of fact, I might get you to just hold these kind of like a rack. So I would go to the pasture with my buckle between my fingers like this, and this is kind of overkill. You don't really have to do this. The tab end of my halter like this and my lead rope over my right shoulder so I can say hello with my right hand. And then usually I'll use my voice, especially on this first horse that doesn't see real well, I'll use my voice to kind of get his attention. And I, hopefully I can go in there and it's just smooth as silk and I catch him, but not always. The main thing is I like to see a horse facing me if possible. If they're looking away from me, I just need to get their attention so I know which eye they're looking at at me with and then I'll hold my halter just like this I'll say hello depending on how tall the horse is I'll either slip my hand over and tip his head towards me or if he's a ginormous horse you know I might slip my hand under and tip his head towards me but then once I've kind of got his mind then a lot of times what I'll do is I'll hand this under I take my tab and you notice looking at that halter it's kind of a wider than it is tall and a lot of times people will just kind of you know it's 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 they'll just kind of push it on a horse's head or a lot of times if the horse is really tall they'll come like this uh, it takes a pretty stoic horse to kind of enjoy that kind of deal so what I like to do is when I go in there I'll hand this under his neck if he's a quarter horse or a short horse yep hand it to my right hand I turn it sideways now it's almost the same shape as his nose I push it up his nose and I twist it as I'm going up and then this comes over his ears and comes in and I buckle it. And so I'll give you three variations right quick. Hello, the tab goes to my right hand. This goes between your nose. I twist it one time. Look, I go way up there. Tuck this in. Take the same hand, continue pulling. Go all the way home with it, tuck it in. Then I'll kind of square it up, make sure everything fits. That's version one. It's kind of what I have you doing. If I'm a small, short woman, I can do this until I don't do that a lot because I'm not a small, short woman. And then I can go ahead and pull this through from underneath. Now this is one option. I'll brag on him. Now I'll show you a different option. This is why a lot of these warm blood halters have a snap right here because a lot of uh, a lot of shorter people or petite people with a very big horse, they can't get their arms up over there. So what they'll do is they'll unbuckle this, take the halter off, and just leave the top part buckled. So here's another option. I can leave the top part of the halter buckled. It's normally not what I do with the normal size halters. And I can come in here like this. Slide this up, go over the offside ear first, near side ear second, take this buckle and bring it around here, snap it. You'll see a lot of people do that in the European countries because they can't reach up there but they can reach up there with that. You take it off the reverse way, near side ear, off side ear. Exactly, but here's why. When I go off the near side ear, I still have control of him and I can still hold him towards me, see? That's why even when I bridle, I'll go off side ear, near side ear once I'm here, I have a little bit less control of him. So let's say we came out to the pasture and we had everything in one hand. Yep, that's the first thing I would do, is take my lead rope and kind of get it out of the way. And I want to be real cognizant of, is it touching the ground? If it is, I want to pull it up a little bit. Now you got an advantage over me, you got an extra foot. So it's going to be 
easier for you to have it just right. And then you kind of kind of get a sensory feel of, do I have it like this? And you step on it because you don't want to do that. Or do I have it like this? Well, now it's dragging. You kind of want to have a good idea depending on the length of your lead rope. Some of these shorter lead ropes, you know, you got to put more over your back because there's less here. So even though I don't have the height that you do, I still like to kind of get my lead rope to where it's pretty well balanced. So this, like, like this? Yep. And it's just kind of a feel. You know, that's safe and this is safe. So now we've still got our halter that's buckled. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and, and a lot of people will pull this this way, trying to get it undone. And, and you would think that would be how it's designed to open. But I find, especially with these leather ones, it's actually easier if you hold the buckle and push this crown piece and it just, yeah, so I, yeah, you can feel it there. But see, I've actually got it the shape of the horse's head, which would be, this would be his near side cheek and this would be his off side cheek. So we'll go ahead and buckle it again. Because it's going to go under like that. Exactly. Unless it's a really tall horse like the warm blood. And then I might actually come under with my hands, you know, and then let this come over his top. But, <clears throat> and get real close right here yeah so especially like if you're in environments where it's where your halters are a little bit wet and the barn might have froze at night you can do <laughs> this for hours and you're thinking it's not coming undone but you can take a real frozen halter push it like that and that buckle will just come but say i've got the bottom part of the buckle actually in my hand so the bottom, yeah, just now, if you buckle it and then have your hand like that when you unbuckle it, you'll feel it'll just release pretty quick. Another reason I don't like doing this is a lot of times when it's on a horse and you're like, and then your hand slips and it whacks the horse. Whereas if you get in the habit of just kind of pushing these two things together, it tends to come off a little bit easier. Yeah, exactly, that's the movement, okay. So then when I get ready to go to the stall, I even want all this organized. So what I like to do is, I like to hold the buckle between my two middle, and these are little things, but little things make a big difference in the, in the final. So I like to hold that like that, and that like that. And I actually face it, just so when I open it, this hand knows exactly what to get. And then this, I can just rotate and... So this, like... Exactly, like this. so that looks ideal. So let's say that my hand was a horse's head. Yep, so what you're gonna do is, you're gonna slip this on in such a way so that you almost feel like this buckle's coming right up between his two eyes. Because look at the shape of this opening right here. And the shape of the opening actually goes on his nose like that. And as it goes up there, just think about corkscrewing it, quarter of a turn. This way. Exactly. So we're gonna come the buckle between his eyes, and then as it starts to come on him, you're just gonna corkscrew it, and then it's gonna end up in a pretty good fit. Whereas if you come straight up their face, a lot of times you roll that hair backwards and they don't like it. Good. And then your right arm can go right up above his ears, good. And you can keep that tab in in your left hand while your right hand reaches over. So the tab is in your right hand, but you don't have any way to get it over. So keep the tab in the same, in the left hand for the now, the other side of the halter. Yeah, but just stick it up. Yeah, so you're good. But right here, just keep it like this. And just hold it like that a little bit. You kind of want this sticking up so it's easy for your right hand to grab. Oh, now put your right hand over his neck. Ah, right take your right hand, before you get the tab, take your right hand and just kind of tip his nose this way. Good. Now see how he's ready to be caught. And you don't loiter. Good, and you kind of pull both ends of the halter. Good, and then you twist it and he's ready to be buckled. That comes behind the ears, tuck it into your buckle. He's got a little bit bigger head, so it's not super easy. Yeah, so it's still a little bit low on him. So what we'll do with him is, we're gonna take this part and just snug it up under his jaw a little bit, and that allows you to pull this over, and then you've got room to kind of buckle him there. And then you can still go ahead and tuck that little tab in. And then I'll let you try it with a bigger halter because it's gonna make it a little bit easier for you. Yes, that was quite nice. And then you just reach up, hook your lead rope with your right thumb, 
Yep, and then just take it off, fold it up like this, and then you're ready to leave. Perfect. So another thing I like about that is that's a good way to lead as opposed to having a bunch of little bitty coils. So a lot of people will lead and work with a horse like that, but if they take off a lot of times, you know, it just sucks down on your finger. So if my lead rope's short enough, I'll actually hold it like this, and if a horse was to take off, I'm pretty safe. But if I've got like a lariat or a 60 foot uh, lariat or a rope or something like that, I'm obviously gonna have to have some coils, but I wanna make sure that they're not crossing each other. Cause when I'm, they're crossing each other like that, that's where I get in trouble if the horse takes off. So I'll keep my coils pretty flat. Now before you get started, I don't mean to interrupt, but I will, right here is a psychological out for him. Okay. So we'll remove that. So if I were going in a stall, I would shut the stall. If I'm going in some temporary panels, I'll shut the, uh, the invitation to escape. That looks great. Now go ahead and introduce your hand up to his right ears, up to his ears, near his ears, because what you're doing is saying, I'm fixing to come in here. Now he's perfect, he's ready for you. That looks nice. That looks nice. That looks perfect. Look at his attitude. He's got a great disposition. You can go ahead and raise it a little bit higher on his nose and then up under his throat latch, under his jaws. Good. And now you're ready to buckle up. And so it may feel like, you know, your hands aren't doing what you're saying. Things aren't really going that fluid, but you just take the time to learn it properly. And I love the way that his nose is bent towards you because that's a horse that has the mind of being with you. He's not evading you by tipping his nose away from you because that tells you a lot where his disposition is. Now you can go ahead and unhalter him. And remember, the closer your hands are to the buckle on both sides, the less variance there will be, you know, with all the leather and everything wadding up. Okay, now I'm not finding this. Oh, there it is. Huh. Okay. And if you have your fingers on the bottom of the buckle, it comes off pretty easy. Good. My gut feeling is the thing that feels the weirdest is how high sometimes your right hand has to go to get the throat piece to come up into the throat. Yeah. Well, the only way to keep from doing that is to keep snugging, snugging, snugging down, and I would prefer just to lift my hand really high. But when you get that tab in, in your right hand, see how I'll curl it backwards? This is what I grabbed. So this is pretty much what I'm gonna stay committed to until this halter is actually nice and this little throat latch piece here is up in his little seam right here. So if I grabbed here, that's what I'm committed to. If I grab here, that's what I'm committed to. If I grab here. So I should grab. No, just kind of what I usually just go like this. And that's what I'm committed to because God gave me a good, healthy, long arm and I can raise it as high as I want to. There's no right or wrongs. So whatever I reach, I can go that high because really my goal is just to get this nice and snug on the horse and then I can let that thing come down and watch this. If you'll lay your thumb over that, so I've got the back of my fingers under the halter, yes. Now see the difference? If you'll take your only your index finger on the top and your little finger and all three of the other fingers, little finger and the middle two fingers. Move your little finger, good. Now you can do this, and look how easy that feeds in there. Yes, it's a little thing, but it makes a big difference. So you grab it like this, and you lift it up, right? Now as it's coming across and you lay it on the horse's head, you can just roll your hand under, push it right in through there like this, and look what's touching the horse. This feels very comforting when I touch the horse with my hands quicker than the crown piece. Then I can just push that in there like that. I can actually use these fingers to push it in, these fingers to pull it out. And I'd say I don't even have to switch my hand. These fingers can push it in. My thumb and index finger can pull it through. Nicely done. So you push it in with these fingers. The same hand continues to pull it through and just keep pulling it through. See how nicely that worked? It's a little thing, but it's one of those things, you know, that kind of pays off in the end. Good, nicely done. Those are little things that just create a flow eventually. Okay, let's try that again. Good, yeah. But see, it's not a fault, it's a learning opportunity. Now your right hand can go as high as you can reach if necessary with your right hand, good. Nicely done, 
nicely done pull that through push that away buckle it so already you're starting to lay down some nice nice muscle memories so this next time you're going to remove a little bit of the thinking and just go in there and see if you can just kind of you know what i'm just going to see how i can do this without thinking too much so whatever we're doing with the horse whether it's feeding or grooming or picking up their feet or putting a bridle on haltering even putting a saddle on taking a saddle off Whatever we do, we'd like to do it in such a way that the horse would like to do it again and again and again. And whatever it is, kind of leave them that feeling about that event that it's like, hey, that was actually kind of fun. That was actually kind of cool. That's something I'd like to do again. And kind of let that be the last statement of the day. And I would want that same kind of feeling with my friends.